Good afternoon. It's 2.30 and this is your Park Life News Update with me, Hisham Abdel Hamid. And me, Natalie Turner. There have been claims of serious harassment at a building site in Gloucester where several women say they've been verbally abused and threatened. Park Life has spoken to victims who say they felt shocked and intimidated. Our very own Lisa Hooper has been following the story. So, Lisa, tell us what happened. So it all started from a tweet by a witness who saw another woman getting verbally abused in the street. Um, and then the second woman came forward to us with a similar experience. So the woman who didn't want to be named was said a, a group of builders stood in her way as she was walking, um, wouldn't let her pass, they were taunting her. This made her feel unsafe. Um, so she went on to say she had to buy a criminal identifier, which is like a glorified pepper spray, um, to protect herself from this sort of thing in the future. And where did this all happen? So this was at a building site in Blackfriars where they're building a new student accommodation for the University of Gloucestershire. Um, the site is run by Vinci Contractors and we approached them for a comment but they haven't yet replied. Uh, so going back to the tweets, what was actually said? So um, these are the tweets. Um, obviously they're not nice. Um, they've generated a great deal of responses, shares and likes as you'd expect. So. Uh, um, and what's been the reaction been like? So, yeah, we've had, you know, people saying it's disgusting. Um, and Mel, who wrote that tweet, spoke to us about what happened. Um, well, I was in a car park in Gloucester with my 82-year-old grandmother and my mother. And uh, there's this building site just across the car park. And one of the men up there thought it'd be funny to first take the mick out of someone who was walking past carrying a briefcase. I thought, ignore that not to do it, nothing to do with me. Then a woman walked past and it was the most vulgar catcalling I have ever heard. It was absolutely vile. And my 82 year old grandmother might have heard that and it was at nine o'clock in the morning, so kids might have heard it, but it was absolutely vile. If it was like the normal, regular, like other, everything else that they say, I would have like let go, but because it was like really, really vile, it just, no, I couldn't do it. And what sort of things did he catch? Um, well, one of the things he said that I am more comfortable with saying, um, what time is it? Bedtime. And then he would do thrusting actions towards her. And it was, it made me uncomfortable and it wasn't even direct. And, uh, Maybe like whistling or say people are in the car, just beeping the horn. But And what's the reaction been like? Uh, so we've been speaking to people in the street and most of them are understandably, you know, really shocked about yeah. what's been said. Maybe like whistling or say people are in the car just beeping the horn, but that's probably about the extent. <laughs> I think that's terrible. Yeah, that's not funny at all, is it? Like, it's actually disgusting, honestly. Like, if, well, I know if this was on a night out, if somebody said that to one of my friends or if there was a group of boys, the guy would be, well, we would have a word with him or he'd probably be beaten up. So we're continuing the coverage of this on our website and we're still waiting to hear back from the contractors. Oh, very appalling. Thank you, thank you so much, Lisa. No problem. One of the top races at Cheltenham had to be cancelled yesterday because horses were struggling to cope with the high temperatures. A horse died following one of the races, but it's unclear whether this was related to the weather conditions. The animal welfare group Animal Aid have criticised the race course for failing to consider the welfare of the horses. The race course has yet to comment. Tanisha Luffman reports. I'm here at Cheltenham Racecourse and unfortunately yesterday a horse died of a heart attack and I'm here at the stables and the atmosphere around the course is actually very quiet. It is unclear whether she died from heat stress, however a post-mortem will be carried out later today to cipher the reasoning behind it. Dame Rose came fourth in the race yesterday where temperatures soared to 25 degrees. It is said that the acclimatisation from the cold weather straight to the heat may have had some impact on the horse's performance. Now, when Beer Keller abruptly closed its doors last month, there was an outcry from students in Cheltenham. But since then, its re replacement has been announced and the public's reaction has been mixed. Oliver Walker went down to Bath Row to talk to the general manager of the new Moody's Place Cheltenham's newest burger bar. The new owners are hard at work turning the old beer keller into a fully functioning burger restaurant and cocktail bar. This section is to become some bar seating and just over there is where the new restaurant will be. 
But what will this company have to offer Cheltenham that it doesn't already have? Um, basically, it's not your average burger place. Um, we're going to have full cocktail menu, lots of late night stuff. Um, it's going to be more of a relaxed sort of place. No loud music, but definitely the best cocktails in town. So how is this restaurant going to benefit Cheltenham? And what jobs are going to be created by it? Probably about 15, but then we've got the delivery side of it as well, which will have up to 10 drivers and five chefs, so probably altogether about 30 jobs. But why open a burger joint in a town with five more burger restaurants already in it? I came to university in Cheltenham, and uh, we never really had a place where we could go at one o'clock and not be surrounded by loud music and have kids running around us. So we're going to bring a more mature feel to Cheltenham, um, somewhere where you can go and just relax and have a good drink late at night. With so many tastes catered for, but so much competition, it'll be interesting to see how Moody's Place fares in the town. Ollie Walker, Heart Life News, Cheltenham. Cheltenham Poetry Festival kicked off yesterday with an evening of slam and spoken word at the Pacopa pub. Writers from the University of Gloucestershire's creative writing course performed microfiction to judges who scored each performer. Erin Wright discovers she's a poet and never knew it. And the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borough goves and the moan rats outgrave. When you think of poetry, you probably think of wordy, dreamy and complicated stories that are hard to understand. When I was at school, I hated it and it never really interested me. But watching slam and spoken word poetry has completely changed my mind. Uh, give me the opportunity to kind of write something like a first fiction piece and then perform it in my class to see how we got on with it, you know, about like any topic that we feel passionate about. So because obviously I feel passionate about homelessness, I thought it'd be good to write like a fast fiction piece about it and then perform it in a way that I feel comfortable to, you know, so writing about that and then performing it. So yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's great. I mean, some of the people that read that I'm actually on the same course as them, so that's really good. So we all really sort of cheer each other on and support each other. And then there were other people here that I've never met before and never heard before, so that was great as well to listen to them and hear what they had to say. Um, and every, everyone's just really lovely anyway, so yeah, it was just a really great night out, really. Uh, I think this sort of event, because of it's things people talk so passionately about and it's things that, the topics that matter to people, I feel like if you would come away with, with a self-acknowledgement of the things that they talk about and just going away thinking about the messages that they send, so like, yeah. I want people to really think about homelessness and how it's a real growing issue and that, you know, just becoming aware of it and seeing the person as a person, you know, seeing someone as, as an individual rather than just someone sat on the street, so I want them to go away with, with, with that, yeah. There's loads more events this week in Cheltenham for the Poetry Festival, so go and check them out. I'm Erin Wright for Park Live. So, Natalie, do you believe in ghosts? Well, the only ghosts that I've ever seen have been on Scooby-Doo. <laughs> um, but they always just turn out to be the bad guy dressed up in disguise. Oh, I remember the days of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> well, earlier this week, a ghostly figure was seen at Berkeley Castle, and experts say that Gloucestershire is a hotspot for spiritual activity. Park Life's very own Velma and Daphne met up with paranormal investigator Anne Shivers to see what they could find. With all this ghostly activity going on, we're here today in Gloucester City Centre. And we're going to meet two very spooky individuals. My name is Anne Shivers. Um, I actually run Gloucester Ghost Walks and um, a business called Night Hangers Paranormal. Basically contact the unliving. We went to the New Inn, one of the most haunted pubs in Gloucestershire. And the spiritual history of this building is um, a lady called Lady Jane Grey, you know, haunts, haunts this place as well. And there's also other spirits, Mr. Bassett. Mr. Bassett is somebody that we've actually communicated with. He's actually come through to us and spoke to us, um, said he remembers me from the 80s. Uh, he used to actually go around the building, he was an old man then, he used to go around the building with this big massive cigar, smoking this cigar, and occasionally you could smell the um, cigar as well. There's loads, literally loads of spirits. In there. Unfortunately, Park Life didn't find any ghosts today. But be sure to keep a account of paranormal activity. That was Emma Hillary and Romy Mulholland at the New Inn, Gloucester. Mm. Now, for the past few days, Gloucestershire has been blessed with sunshine and the hottest April weather for years. Temperatures hit 24 degrees yesterday, and the best place to cool off was the Sanford Park Lido.
Cameron Hayward has left the pool and gone to the park to bring you weather forecast for the week. It's another warm day in Gloucestershire. Unfortunately, not quite as sunny as it was yesterday, with most of the county waking up to a shroud of fog, but uh, temperatures staying up in the early 20s all day. You can tell summer is starting to approach as uh, sunset is at 8 o'clock tonight. Should be a relatively mild night with temperatures no lower than 9 degrees. Uh, we'll see a few patches of rain tomorrow afternoon with a chance to even see some lightning as the night draws in. Uh, this is followed by a pretty cold and reasonably dry Sunday to top the weekend off. Next week looking much cooler with temperatures rarely pushing beyond 15 degrees. Back to you in the studio. Thanks Cameron. That, so that's all we have for now. You can keep up with more news on our Twitter page, UOG Park Life, and our Instagram and Facebook. Goodbye. Goodbye.